Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Closed Doors, this time in my house, as you can see behind me. Now, I got a lot of questions about that XP Pen Artist 12. Like, how is it? How does it work? And the video got a lot of questions from you guys. So, today I decided to add a small video, and this is actually the video that might be the most important one. It's about calibration. So let's first take a look at what is calibration. Now, of course, when we see colors, we judge them with our eyes, right? Red is red, blue is blue. That is how we watch colors. However, when you look at monitors or displays, they don't really do that naturally. They have a certain color space. And that color space, of course, is what that monitor displays. Red, green, and blue will be slightly different on each monitor or display. And that has nothing to do with, of course, the quality of the display. It's also how that display is designed. Which color space does it support? Is it and you probably know that term, an Adobe RGB, sRGB, maybe it's a P3 display or BT2020 or Rec709. Those are all color spaces. Some are video, some are related to computers. Now, of course, for us, it's important to work in a color space that is as close as possible to Adobe RGB. But is it really important that a device hits that Adobe RGB spot on? You might say yes. The answer is actually no. Let me explain. When we look at a color space, it's very important to realize that we see six colors. RGB are our primary colors, red, green, and blue. We also have secondary colors, so called cyan, magenta, and yellow. There's actually one thing that locks them all together, and that's called the black body curve. Now, on the black body curve, there's a white point. This is our white balance point. Now, for what we do on photography and video, it's often D65, or in other words, 6500 degrees Kelvin. This is where we calibrate our monitors for grayscaling. Now, there's, of course, a lot more. You have gamma curves, and, of course, you have that color space. Now, when you know that the three primary colors are RGB, and the secondary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow, and there's a white point, you might understand that also when you connect those colors together through the white point, you get your color space. Now, in each color space, of course, those coordinates are different. For example, Adobe RGB has more saturated colors than, for example, sRGB. So why is this important when I talk about the 12-inch display that I'm going to calibrate, right? It's important to understand that it's not that important that everything is as close as possible to Adobe RGB. It's important that all the ratios between the colors are the same. What does that mean? Now, I can calibrate something to Adobe RGB, and let's say everything is like 80% Adobe RGB except red. What you will see is that you will see all kinds of images, and the reds are just way too vibrant. The reds just doesn't look right. Now, if you retouch on a device like that, and you deliver it to a client, the reds will actually be, yes, too low. Because you add it with too much red, you will turn down the reds, and your client will go like, where did the reds go? So it's very important that you have a device that mimics Adobe RGB, but has the same ratios. If a device has the same ratios as Adobe RGB, it doesn't really matter. That it's a little bit lower in saturation. If it's in balance, it's very simple. You edit on the device, you keep everything the way that you want, and now when you look at it on an Adobe RGB, you will find that the colors are a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated. But in essence, the balance between those colors, and that's what we do with color grading, that's what we do with our retouching, is actually pretty okay. Is it perfect? No, no way at all. Of course, it's best if we have a 100% Adobe RGB display with 100% Adobe RGB colors and 100% calibrated. But hey, life would be great if I have a million dollars, right? And what can you expect from a 300 euro display? Well, it surprised me before. Let's start our calibration software and let's see what this baby can do. So let's grab the analyzer and let's see our tablet. Now this is our home setup. So this is the tablet in front of my BenQ monitor. The BenQ monitor is calibrated perfectly. And let's see how close we can get with this one. Now for the calibration, I will be using an i1 Display Plus. It's a not that expensive analyzer. It works like a charm for the ISF calibrations. We actually use a highly tuned version of this, the C6. 
and they are very very reliable it doesn't matter really under what conditions you use them like a spectrometer they will drift a little bit this is just very very reliable it's not the best on the market but hey it's let me put it this way if you're a professional photographer or videographer and you only use a computer this works like a charm if you have to do calibrations on a high-end professional level for for example projectors or displays this is okay but for what we are doing now this is one of the best analyzers you can get because it's very very stable and it just gives you great results and it's affordable so get one of these yep highly recommend them okay let's start up the software And this is going to run you through the settings, so this is not that spectacular. You can always use the automated settings, or in my case, I'm going to use the advanced. Okay, it's detecting the analyzer, so I have an i1 profiler display. Awesome. Go to profiling. Choose your monitor, in this case the artist. And I'm going to drag the display back to the screen I'm recording, so you guys can see the settings. And there we go. Okay, first things first, you have to set everything up. In this case, we're just going to leave it on white LED. White point. In this case, let's do the 6500. This is what we use for our uh, photography, of course. Luminance, I don't know what the uh, panel is outputting. So for this case, just use native. Now, I have to remember, if a display is on full power, it will have less accurate colors in most cases than when it's a little bit dimmed. So I'm going to do the calibration twice. This is on full blast, so it's on 100% brightness. And I'm just going to let it run through and see how, how good it is. Contrast ratio, just do it native. So most of the times, just leave it as it is. So in this case, gamma 2.2, that's great. Uh, I don't believe in ambient light meter unless you are in a situation where you have ambient light. But do remember when you have sunlight coming into your office, this doesn't really work for the very simple reason the color of the of sorry the temperature of the color of the sun constantly changes. This is more when you work in an environment where there's continuity in ambient light, so it's always the same color temperature. Okay, and it looks pretty good. So now go to next. And now what I have to do is actually choose here my profiling. Now I normally use this on defaults, but beware of this one. As you can see, default is version two. There's also version four. And a lot of people choose version four because, hey, it's newer. It can run you into some troubles with compatibility and colors that don't look right. So the best is just to use version two. There's not a huge difference for what we do. So version two is actually the best. And you have matrix or table based. Just leave it on matrix based for now. Okay, and go to next. And now you will see the patch size. You can do small, medium or large. If you do large, of course, it's more accurate. If you do medium, it takes a little bit lo uh, longer than the small one. It's a little bit better accuracy and small. As you can see here, it's, it's okay. I normally go for medium when I test something and then when I do the final adjustments I will actually go for large. But for now let's do medium. Okay, Let's go to next. Now this is the place where I actually have to start measurement so I'm going to stop the screen recording for now and we're going to go to the panel. Okay I just place it in the middle of the display and there we go and let's start up the software. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of colors going through the analyzer and it's now metering all those colors and it will actually create a profile. And that profile is what you're going to use for your monitor. So not for your color space in Adobe RGB, it's just for the monitor. Now, why do I mention that you don't edit in this color space? You see a lot of people that calibrate the monitor and then use that color space as an Adobe color space. And that's not correct. If you are in Photoshop, you are working in Adobe RGB or sRGB or Profoto RGB. But your color profile from your monitor, that's what you actually set up in your OS. So in Windows, Linux or actually Mac OS. So don't confuse those two. It's now creating a color profile for the monitor. So it's not a color space the monitor okay it's done with the calibration and I didn't choose any Adobe RGB but just native and as you can see here this is the color space of the display and here you can see 
more info. So after calibration, it's 6506. That's awesome. Let me see. Native 09. That's the black level. Luminance 220 CDM, which is pretty high. Uh, normally, when you judge work, it's better to judge between 120 and 130. To retouch, however, 220, it's not that bad, especially when you do it somewhere where there's a lot of ambient light. But we're going to put that down a little bit. And contrast ratio native is actually 236658 to 1. That's pretty good. That's the difference between white and black and how you experience a display. So if it's very contrasty or there's a lot of dynamic range. So this is okay. It's For a 12 inch in this price range, it's actually more than okay. So grayscaling, blue is a little bit out. So we're going to lower the brightness in a moment to see if that actually is corrected. And there's a little bit too much red on the whites. And green is okay. So overall in the middle, there's a little bit too much green. But hey, this is this is really not bad. This is really good. Now, normally, you also see a before and after. Now, as you can see here, because I did the calibration before, there's not a before and after. But you can still see the original color uh, creeping through when I press this. Do you see? You see that flickering of blue? This is how it was out of the box. So it's way too blue. And you see this in a lot of displays. So calibration is always very, very important. Okay, so now let's lower the brightness and see what happens then. Okay, so now I calibrated with the brightness on 70%. So let's take a look at the color space. Okay, slightly different of course. Let's look at our targets. So we now achieved 64.95, which is great. That's no problem at all. Black level is, of course, the same, relatively the same. Native is now 171. A lot better to retouch on. And native contrast ratio is, of course, also going down. Because if you turn down the brightness, you will also lose some contrast ratio. But it still looks very, very nice. Okay, let's look at grayscale tracking. Same problem. At the top, there's a little bit too little blue. I actually think it's better on full brightness, but this is really nothing to worry about, guys. This You're now looking at graphs, and in all honesty, this is pretty okay. Okay, and before and after, of course, doesn't work again for the very simple reason I already did a calibration. Okay, so overall, looks pretty good. Let's save this, and let's check one more final thing. Now, of course, there's one thing you can do to actually test everything and see if it's right. And let's actually go to quality. And now you can actually see that we have a patch over here. These are the colors that are chosen for the patch. So now just choose my artist. Patch set standard. You can also choose for spot or image. In this case, just use standard. So you have several options here uh, for references. You can go totally berserk. And let's not do that. Let, let's keep it simple for now, okay? So let's go for our x right Color Checker Classic. And let's just go for Next. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to meter all these squares. Or actually the software is going to do that. And it's actually going to show you how much those squares are different from what it's supposed to be. So let's do a remeasure. It's now going to meter all those squares. And then it will give you a report about, well how accurate this display is. And do realize this is really a budget display. So don't expect any miracles or 100% accuracy. But I have high hopes to be honest. Because up until now it performs very very well. Okay. It's done. And here you can see that there is there is some differences. So you see it actually is supposed to be a little bit darker. And overall. Yeah, you, you can see some differences here. But let's see what actually the calculations say. So overall, it passed. But again, it's a budget display. And this is actually good. So this is not bad. It's not perfect. But it passed. And well, it looks okay. I'm very happy with this. But you know what they say, right? Never ever trust something that you didn't check yourself. And what is the best way to check a display? Very simple. Watch some images or movies that you really know by heart. And let's be honest, I created my own work. I know how it's supposed to look. So what I'm always doing after a calibration of a new device is actually just throw in some images 
and to see how it looks. But there's still one thing, and that's one thing that you may or may not do yourself. And after this, you may actually start doing it because, well, this actually shows the weak points and strong points of a tablet. Now, during normal periods of time when there's no pandemic going around, we do a lot of trade shows. And one of the things that I absolutely love about trade shows is of course teaching there. The thing that I hate is that a lot of people don't see the images as they are intended, right? Because often the projectors and displays let me just put it blandly, they suck. They are not calibrated, they are not properly adjusted. And let's be honest, I don't have time to calibrate a projector when I'm teaching a workshop, right? So there's one thing that I always bring with myself and that's actually a grayscale. It's a very simple pattern. You can also call it a plunge pattern or a, a stepped grayscale, whatever. It's 10 steps. It goes from totally black to pure white. If a display is correctly calibrated or correctly set up, you can see the darkest black slightly above the darkest black and of course the whitest white and slightly below the darkest white. Uh, the whitest white, sorry. But there's also something else and that's actually in the middle of this pattern. In the middle of this pattern there's a zebra. You don't see the zebra on a bad calibrated or a bad display because it will just be black. And in this case this actually surprised me a lot because I tested this on my previous tablet and it crushed the blacks. This tablet, under 300 euros, doesn't cross the blacks and it doesn't cross the whites. Let me show you and I, I hope you can see it on the camera. Okay, first of all, let me turn off the light. There you go. Okay, so pure white, slightly below white, pure black, slightly above black. Shows up perfectly. But now the surprise, I can also see the zebras here. And that's awesome because on my previous display, no way. So, awesome. Okay, you guys asked for it. What is my opinion on the tablet? Well, I've worked on it a few hours. It's very good. But most of all, for me, calibration is vital. Because if you have a tablet that doesn't show the colors right, and most of all that isn't in balance, you can't really do any retouching work. Because everything you do, every color grading you do, you have to redo on a proper monitor. The idea of having a tablet, especially when you travel, is that you have a laptop with an okay display, but you have to trust your tablet. Now, I'm not going to say that you can trust this tablet 100%, because there are errors. But... In all honesty, under 300 euros, this literally surprised me a lot. Let me put it in the class. It's 100% workable. You can trust it. But if it's really critical, you still have to check your colors, of course, on a proper calibrated monitor. But again, guys, let's be totally fair. For a display that you can retouch on, they're never 100% Adobe RGB. They're never 100% color accuracy. There's always some compromises. And under 300 euros, I just can't find anything negative. I'd love to find something negative in a review. Because although I'm very positive, I always want to have that little extra point like, okay, it's perfect, but. And I just can't find the but at the moment. So just ask me in the comments below, what do you want me to test? Where do you think this tablet will actually literally just fail because I'm out of ideas. Calibration works pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's pretty well. If you lower the brightness a little bit, it's actually a little bit better. But even on full brightness, it's not that bad. And most of all, I can see all the black detail. I can see all the white detail. Ask me in the comments below what you want me to test more. And of course, we're going to do the same test on the 24, but I'm going to do that just in writing. Because if you see a video with twice the same, that's not that interesting. So, if you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel. Leave comments below, smash that like button. But most of all, tell other people about our channel so we can grow. And this is going to be a lot of fun for me to experiment with. Thank you so very much, guys, and see you again next time. Bye-bye.